We all face times of self-doubt and anxiety, not to mention that endless quest to grow beyond ourselves and discover life's meaning. In his book, What Life Could Mean to You, Alfred Adler dishes out valuable insights plus a possible roadmap for tackling such struggles. Let's break down the core pieces of Adler's work to grasp how we can harness our potential, push past perceived limitations, and sculpt lives abundant in purpose and fulfillment. Alfred Adler was a leading psychologist and a contemporary of Sigmund Freud. He is well known for advancing the field of psychology through his development of individual psychology. Adler's approach was groundbreaking. He emphasized each person's uniqueness and the pivotal role social factors play in shaping one's personality. Born in 1870 in Vienna, Adler faced considerable health issues and family dynamics early on that informed his perspectives on human behavior. As a young child, Adler suffered from rickets, which left him unable to walk until age four. At age five, he contracted a severe case of pneumonia that nearly took his life. These agonizing bouts with illness instilled in him a profound desire to pursue medicine. Growing up alongside multiple siblings, Adler often felt eclipsed by his older brother's accomplishments. This sibling rivalry and lingering feelings of inferiority led Adler to closely examine how one's place in the family influences personality development. Despite his poor health as a youngster, Adler excelled academically. He pursued medicine at the University of Vienna starting out as an eye doctor prior to transitioning into general practice, eventually specializing in psychiatry and psychology. Adler was initially a colleague of Fru's, but parted ways over one major bone of contention, their divergent theories. Fru fixated on sexuality as the crux of human behavior. Meanwhile, Adler preferred taking a big picture view of the individual as a whole. Adler's holistic perspective stood in stark contrast to Freud's intense focus on the depths of the unconscious mind. According to Adler, people often wrestle with feelings of inferiority if they believe they fall short somehow. This self-perceived inadequacy can actually motivate folks to seek superiority, pushing themselves to enhance their abilities and circumstances. Essentially, Adler felt this movement from inferiority towards superiority propels personal growth. It's vital we strike a balance between inferiority and the quest for superiority. An overly robust sense of inferiority risks developing into an inferiority complex, dragging down self-image and behaviors. However, when kept in check, Feeling inferior can be a constructive motivator, driving us to conquer obstacles and achieve our potential. Adler pioneered the notion of the creative self, suggesting we can shape our personalities and destinies through our subjective lens on the world. Rather than remaining prisoners of our past, Adler believed we are the architects of our futures able to interpret experiences in ways that propel us toward our goals. Stephen Hawking embodies Adler's concept of self-transcendence. Diagnosed with ALS at 21, Hawking was only expected to live two more years. Yet he defied the odds and made remarkable contributions to physics and cosmology over the following decades. Despite his physical condition worsening, Hawking demonstrated extraordinary grit. Rather than sink into despair, he poured himself into work. His physical limitations did not deter him from exploring complex theories on black holes and the origins of the universe. Hawking's groundbreaking research tremendously furthered our grasp of these realms. Adler's approach is all about empowering people in therapy to reframe their life stories. Instead of zeroing in on apparent weaknesses, he spotlights strengths and potential. His methodology also hinges on encouragement, nurturing self-belief and confidence to drive positive change and self-actualization. In contrast to rigid assumptions about human nature, 
Adler took an optimistic view, one underscoring every person's power to reassess and constructively shape their own journey. His visionary approach helps us see a path no longer confined by the past. Rather, it's a path of continuous evolution through our creative gifts. This uplifting philosophy didn't just revolutionize psychology, it also offers timeless wisdom for realizing personal growth and fulfillment. Adler believed each of us charts a unique course based on our personal goals that steer us. These aims infuse life with direction and purpose, driving us to realize achievements and fulfillment. When behavior needs realigning, Adler felt we must first re-examine and redefine our goals. Setting refreshed, constructive objectives reroutes. Someone towards positive outcomes. Take an athlete continually losing races. After reflection, they realize their sole goal was to win, not improve. Reframing their objective to focus on bettering performance reloaded their motivation. Ultimately, they achieved new personal bests and competitive wins. This narrative displays reverse causality. Instead of past causes dictating present effects, Adler's approach suggests envisioned futures become causes of current actions, effectively reversing the flow. Applying Adler's principles, we should regularly review and recalibrate life goals to ensure they still match evolving aspirations and values. Alfred Adler introduced the idea of Gemeinschaftsgefühl, translating to community feeling or social interest. This principle is central to his theories, underscoring humanity's interconnectedness. Adler believed fully self-actualized people intrinsically understand that they are part of a greater community. Their personal well-being is inextricably tied to others' well-being. Research in neuroscience backs this notion that we are wired for empathy and cooperation. The discovery of mirror neurons, for instance, suggests we naturally attune to and share others' feelings. From an evolutionary view, collaboration has been critical to survival. Humans have developed as social creatures, with cooperation markedly advancing societies. Consider people who find profound meaning through charity and volunteering. Their sense of purpose often stems from the positive impact they have on other lives. Adler pinpointed three central struggles we all grapple with. Occupational woes, interpersonal strains and marriage difficulties. He saw these quandaries essentially boiling down to cooperation matters. Resolving them effectively, Adler felt, is key to discovering life's meaning. Occupational struggles relate to divvying up work in society, grasping our roles and duties while cooperating smoothly with others on the job to reach shared targets. Dividing labor is a basic economic concept. Production gets split into tasks handled by varied workers. This specialization lifts efficiency and output, yet also demands tightly coordinated teamwork and insight into one's part within the big picture. Every person in a company or community takes on discrete roles and responsibilities through Adler's lens, acknowledging and delivering on these. Roles fuels both personal and collective triumph. The BMW i3 project kicked off with loads of buzz, an ambitious bid to design a game-changing green car. The squad comprised experts across domains. The project manager coordinated efforts and ensured deadlines stayed on track. Design engineers brainstormed stylish, driver-friendly features. Mechanical engineers tackled the engine, battery tech and other functional components. Environmental consultants verified sustainable builds and eco-friendly processes. Initially, snags abounded. Miswired messages bred duplication and foggy understanding of each member's niche hampered headway. Detecting these pitfalls, the project leader proactively built bridges between teammates. Team building sessions strengthened interpersonal ties and communication. Regular check-ins had members sketch their roles, duties and backup opportunities. 
This narrowed the gulfs between specialties. As the work progressed, the crew expanded their grasp of colleagues' responsibilities and superpowers. The increased insight led to tighter coordination. Designers tapped environmental advisors to greenlight sustainable materials. Mechanical engineers synced with designers to align form and function. The project manager orchestrated the division of labor and cooperation, keeping all eyes on the prize. This collaboration upgrade birthed the BMW i3, an innovative eco-ride and triumph of teamwork despite early scrapes. It exemplified how diverse squads can rally around shared goals through understanding each member's value and aligning their strengths. Having company can actually boost how we tackle simple tasks. This social facilitation means a workplace crew, when roles are clear and skills strong, can lift performance through shared drive and encouragement. Group cohesion, that glue binding teams, is key too. Tight bonds lift satisfaction, ease stress and advance results. Adler's views on occupational woes spotlight understanding our duties amid the workload split. Boosting on-the-job teamwork and communication helps folks and groups conquer work struggles. By aligning strengths behind shared targets, we can craft a more harmonious, hard-hitting professional world. When it comes to people problems, how we connect with others, building cooperative relationships is crucial for working through sticky spots and forging meaningful bonds. At their core, people problems come down to the intricate dance of human interaction. How every gesture, word and feeling shapes our relationships tapestry. Adler stressed that the ability to relate well unlocks handling these hurdles and cultivating meaningful ties. Picture colleagues Alex and Jordan butting heads over a project. Both raise fair points, but the friction between them throws up roadblocks. Adler would say Alex and Jordan should focus less on winning the spat, but more on grasping each other's perspectives and finding common ground. This asks for empathy, truly listening and meeting halfway. When looking at human behavior, emotional intelligence is vital. This means recognizing, understanding and handling our own and others' emotions. If Alex and Jordan apply emotional intelligence, they could smooth out their clash, expressing concerns without touchiness, actively listening and responding with empathy. Also key is grasping the psychology theory of mind, attributing beliefs, intents, emotions, etc. to ourselves and others, knowing different views exist. Understanding Jordan's perspective based on their distinct experiences, Alex can approach the chat cooperatively. As Alex and Jordan apply these principles, the problem shifts from individual victory towards collective success. They start sharing openly, co-brainstorming solutions. And slowly, their once ego-charged battleground morphs into a showcase for the power of working relationships. By Adler's take, marriage problems boil down to building a cooperative partnership, needing mutual respect, understanding and shared duties to maintain a healthy, happy relationship. Of all human bonds, marriage is profoundly intricate. Take Sarah and Lee, a couple who, after years, hit a rough patch. Their once fiery spark seemingly faded amidst daily grind and unvoiced expectations swirling between them. Adler would pinpoint their issue's core, the erosion of cooperation in their partnership. What was once a dance of nurture and understanding had decayed into a silent struggle for control and validation. To mend their bond, Sarah and Lee embarked on a journey of rediscovery, guided by principles of mutual respect and shared duties. They learned about emotional bids, a term coined by psychologist John Gottman. Bids are any attempts to establish connection, support or attention, recognizing and responding. To these bids is key for partnership and intimacy. 
Through counseling, they practiced active listening, fully absorbing each other's perspectives without judgment or defensiveness. This simple yet profound shift in communication allowed them to see each other more clearly. They also revisited dividing responsibilities, not just chores, but emotional labor, often overlooked. By acknowledging these invisible tasks, they began appreciating each other's contributions deeply. As Sarah and Lee's story shows, Adler saw marriage problems not as insurmountable, but as chances to reconnect more profoundly by building a cooperative partnership with mutual respect, understanding and balanced duties, a couple can rekindle a healthy, resilient relationship, ready for life's challenges. For Adler, cooperation is key to overcoming life's hurdles and unlocking meaning. Whether professionally, personally or in marriage, we have to build collaborative relationships. Only then can we meaningfully contribute to society and find fulfillment. Picture a tapestry, each thread a life interweaving to form something greater. Alone, one thread achieves little, but together they craft beauty and permanence. This was Adler's perspective. Our lives gain richness and purpose when entwined with others through cooperation. The journey of Slack's creation is a testament to how a diverse team, initially struggling with challenges, can transform into a cohesive unit to create a groundbreaking product. Slack started off as an internal tool whipped up by a tiny team at Tiny Spec, working away on an online game called Glitch. Led by Stuart Butterfield, this diverse squad brought unique skills and views to the table. But they faced early struggles. Glitch wasn't panning out, leading to high tensions and uncertainty. Recognizing the need for a shake-up, Butterfield pushed for open communication and collaboration. He cultivated an environment where each viewpoint mattered and got understood. This helped the team shift from individual tasks towards a shared purpose. As the crew started appreciating each member's contributions, their work geared up. Their internal communication tool for Glitch evolved into a standalone product, which we now know as Slack. Designed not just as a chat app, but as a platform-boosting workplace coordination and teamwork. Under Butterfield's leadership, their efforts birthed a creation that's since become invaluable for organizations everywhere. Cooperation proves key in personal relationships too. Take Alex. He always figured that to be heard, he had to dominate chats. But this left Pal sidelined. In opening his ears more than his mouth, Alex uncovered a rich tapestry of perspectives and feelings, sparking more profound connections. He learned cooperation isn't losing his voice, it's harmonizing many voices. And for marriages like Sarah and Lee's, it's a dance, a give and take, balancing support and independence. In embracing this dance, respecting each other's rhythms and learning new steps together, they move as one. Missteps still happen, but each becomes a chance to learn and grow closer. Adler's philosophy reminds us life isn't a solo trek. We're part of a greater whole, our fulfillment stemming from our contributions to this whole. Cooperation is the thread binding us, allowing us to tackle life's trials, not as isolated struggles, but shared journeys. And in this shared experience, we find true meaning and fulfillment. Adler stressed equality within relationships, especially marriages, believing successful partnerships see both parties on equal footing, neither dominating. This plays out in Emma and Luca's quaint living room. Together for years, they've weathered squalls of conflict like any couple, but rather than letting one eclipse the other, they sit as equals, tea in hand, ready to listen and grasp. One evening, facing a decision about moving for Emma's job prospect, tension ran high. Luca agonized over abandoning his budding career while Emma grappled with asking such sacrifice. This could have nosedived into a power struggle, yet it proved Adler's equality vision. 
They began by acknowledging their shared dream of mutual growth. Luca voiced his worries without accusation. Emma shared her excitement while validating Luca's concerns. It demanded stripping away notions of dominance, seeing each other as equal partners. Research shows when people feel respected and heard, positive communication and problem-solving become more likely. Emma and Luca's even exchange of thoughts and feelings enabled a decision honoring both their needs without overshadowing. For Adler, relationship equality wasn't just idealistic. This practical view sees partnerships thriving when both parties stand on equal ground, becoming sources of strength and joy rather than power struggles. Emma and Luca's tale illustrates how equality can morph challenges into opportunities for growth and deeper connections. Adler also discussed education goals, asserting that developing cooperation should be primary, not just academics. He warned over-pampering children could impair their ability to collaborate later on. Teacher Ms. Robinson in a small community classroom took this to heart. Her students were academically adept but struggled with teamwork and empathy. Recalling Adler's focus on cooperation, she integrated this vital skill into her curriculum. Instead of lectures, Ms. Robinson assigned group projects and peer teaching. She observed students navigating complex collaborative dynamics. Little Maya, used to solo success, initially found sharing tasks challenging, but over weeks she recognized the value in different viewpoints and abilities. Similarly, Alex, who often took a back seat, discovered his own voice, contributing crucial ideas to their winning project. Ms. Robinson also avoided over-pampering students. She offered support, but let them experience natural consequences within the safe classroom. When a science project tower collapsed, instead of fixing it, she asked them to reflect on what went wrong and how to rebuild together. Through these experiences, the children learned about interdependence, respect, and the shared thrill of cooperative success. They progressed socially, emotionally, and academically, gaining lifelong skills. Adler's warning against overindulgence was evident in how these students started tackling obstacles without expecting rescue. Realizing overcoming hurdles was part of learning. As they matured, they carried the ability to build collaborative relationships, a talent that would serve them beyond school walls, enriching life. Alfred Adler's work, What Life Could Mean to You, packs some serious wisdom around understanding human behavior and self-actualization. His ideas serve as a roadmap for conquering life speed bumps and discovering purpose through teamwork and societal impact. As we steer our individual journeys, it pays to recall Adler's insights. Let's aim to push past perceived limitations, build collaborative connections, and bring our positive contributions to the table. By doing so, we can unlock our boundless potential and lead lives rich with meaning.